Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel where today, DefDoc here, I'm going to be talking about Intel XTU and why you should stop using it. Alright, so I just want to say this straight up, I did make a video on overclocking the CPU, uh, overclocking the RAM and undervolting the CPU, and I was like talking about how great it was, and how good Intel XTU was, it was like so good in my eyes. Well basically... I am now changing my mind and saying that it's actually garbage. And the reason why I'm saying this is because, well, basically, if you ever want Intel's, like, cool new tricks for your CPU, even though your computer's not old, you can't use them. You know why you can't use them? Because basically Intel, in their eyes, is like Apple when they're like, oh, well, let's look at our product line and let's say, oh, this product's already outdated when it's a year old. That legit makes no sense, and I 100% bet that whatever they could throw at, like, a laptop CPU would work. So I really don't get why the heck they literally stop support for a project, a pro for a, a product, literally a year, I mean, literally a month later. Like, legit, well, not a month later, maybe, like, a five months later. Like, what the heck's the point? And basically, then people can't find that version of, like, the update on their computer unless they go to a website that is not actually Intel's website. It's very sketchy in a way, and it doesn't really help you out. But that's not the only reason why I stopped using Intel XTU. Intel XTU has so many bugs that legit caused my computer to, when if I if I literally booted up my computer and went to, like, my anti of antivirus software, or I went to, uh, like, Windows Update, if I would touch any of that, the computer would legit crash. And I legit didn't even understand why, why. And I found out it's because of Intel XTU. Intel XTU would also reset my over, my undervolts. It would restart my clocks on my uh, RAM. It legit would cause so much stuff not to work correctly. And legit, I don't know why it would just cause all these problems. And then... Here was the final nail in the coffin. Legit, one day, it just stopped working. And I see this a lot online when people are like, Intel XTU just stopped working for me. Legit, it just stops working. Legit, you try to open it, it tells you there's another uh, profile already running. Delete it before you can run this. I literally searched my computer to find anything and nothing was running. This is why I'm making an updated video about undervolting and overclocking your RAM. Well, you can't really under overclock your RAM, but this is a this is a video on how to undervolt your CPU on the Intel and AMD side. This video 100% is so much it's this is a lot better than Intel XTU. And Intel XTU might seem a little bit like simpler, but I promise you this in the end is a lot better. So, yeah. Sorry for like the long intro. But if you guys are ready to hear what I'm about to say, then please leave a like and subscribe to the channel for more uh, computer videos Meep like this. And here's your daily meme. Roses are red, my mom is really mean. Today we're watching the liberal propaganda film about an illegal gay Muslim. It's called al Adi. There you go. Yeah, okay, so let's hop right into this. So first off, we need to install the program called Throttle Stop. Throttle stop is a other is a like kind of like the same thing as uh it's like the same thing as Intel XTU. I'll be leaving it down in the in the description of this video. And basically something else about this is that you don't have to restart your computer for this program. Your computer will legit be fine right when you install this. Alright, so right now currently I am running the throttle stop 9.2, not 9.2. 0.9 beta they just say it's more stable to run this and I think I'm more capable of what's running this I don't know if it will make a difference if you do But yeah, and plus this is like just remember it doesn't matter what CPU you have you legit can run this You don't have to worry about finding a different version of a CPU Version to run this system. You don't need to go back in auto logs and like find it You know legit it will be here for you to install Unless you're running, like, a different version of Windows, like Windows 8 or Windows 7. Then you'll probably have to look for a different version. But that's besides the point. Anyways, so 
download this. I'm not going to show the downloading process because, well, I don't know if it will even let me download it since it already has a version of it on my computer. So, yeah. So after you get it installed, we launch Throttle Stop. And now Throttle Stop will ask your computer for permission from the administrator every single time you boot it, and there's no way of getting rid of it. All right, so let's get started. Basically, ever since I've ran this, actually, my CPU has been running a lot colder, and I've actually seen temps actually drop underneath of 35. I have never seen that with Intel XTU. And another problem with Intel XTU is that Intel XTU legit stopped my undervolt all the time. Legit, it would be at 40 for maybe about 30 minutes. And then out of nowhere was legit no programs like opened. Like I was legit wondering, why the heck wouldn't it work? It would legit go from like 40, then out of nowhere go to 50, then out of nowhere go to 60, then 70, and then idle at 70. Which isn't good for a laptop, I'm just saying that straight up. And legit, I've had my computer on for about, uh, what, 9 hours right now? 10 hours? Maybe even half a day right now? And the CPU right now, at idle, well, actually, like, recording this video right now, is at 42C. 42C is an amazing idle type. That is a great temp, but like, moving on to like help you guys out with what I'm trying to show you, is that also another thing you do need the Intel XTU in, uh, turned on if you are running 10th gen, or well at this point maybe even 11th gen uh, Intel CPUs, which that will be in your advanced BIOS, and here's that clip right now. Spam, wait, you have to turn off your computer completely, turn it back on, and then press the delete key or F2 as fast as you can, because then, it, the, the computer will not boot into Windows, it will boot into the BIOS. Now, on the screen of the BIOS, you will not be able to see anything uh, but, like, the home menu, the advanced menu. Well, basically, then, we can't overclock anything right now. But we have to get inside the advanced BIOS. Now, how to get into the advanced BIOS is that you have to hold right shift, right control, left alt, and F2. All at the same time, and when you do that, then you get inside the advanced BIOS. When you get inside the advanced BIOS, go over to this, go over to the setting called advanced, scroll down, and it says say something about overclocking and overclock uh, something about performance overclocking. Then when you're there, you scroll down a little bit, and it should say Intel XTU. This will then turn on the the setting to overclock with the program Intel Extreme Tuning Utility. Turning that on, going back over to save and, and exit, hit uh, save and exit, then hit enter, and then you're out of there. The computer will then reboot. It might take a little bit. All right, now back to this. After you got that done, all right, so first off, we want to turn on speed shift. Speed shift makes your CPU run a lot more smoother and just makes everything kind of chill. So yeah. Okay, now that we have that turned on, we want to go to the FIVR section. All right, so this is basically everything right here that will tell you how much you can how you can overclock, how you can undervolt, stuff like this. Now, I do say this right now, do not overclock your CPU on the laptop. You want as cold uh temps as much as you can because the colder the temps are, the longer it can stay at that turbo boost and the longer it's in that turbo boost, the better performance you're going to get. Anyways, so if you're running the GL65 Leopard 10SFK, same laptop as me, or better yet, just the i7-10750H, you can copy my settings. Or if you're not, you can even go lower. I mean, basically, you got to remember, if you do test this out and your computer does crash, it is not a big it's not a big deal. You can launch back up your computer and you can retweet them. It's okay. It... I promise you everything should be okay. But do not go crazy. Do not drop it down to negative 200 or anything like that. I doubt any CPU actually can really handle that. But anyways. So. The offset voltage I have set is negative 120. I've had negative 120 for a while. And I have not ran into any problems ever since I switched to turbo, uh, thermal throttle. Now I'm just saying this right now. If you still are running Intel XTU and it's working fine for you. Do not get scared. Do not get worried. Do not hurry up and delete it, because I say it too. If it works good for you, then good. 
I'm happy. I It worked good for me for at least six months, and it, I'm happy it worked fine for me for six months because it helped me out. All right. Another thing, the second thing, is uh, the Intel GPU. So basically, your integrated graphics. Uh, AMD doesn't really have integrated graphics. It will have integrated graphics for like... Uh, like four CPUs, but I doubt any of them are actually mobile CPUs. So yeah, no, I dropped mine down to negative one hundred. I probably can drop it more, but I really don't want to mess with this because one thing that happened was that when I touched this in Intel XTU, my computer would crash. So I was really skeptical of dropping this down to negative one hundred and twenty, but I'm sticking it at one hundred. You can drop it down to one twenty if you want to, and tell me in the comments if it worked for you. And if it does, cool. I will try it myself. And the CPU cache is basically the same thing as offset. After this, you want to make sure that you switch this to OK Save Voltages immediately and hit OK and hit Apply. Well, actually, before you do anything, uh, when when you are testing out, like if like 150 and stuff like that, do hit like do not save voltages like immediately just to test it. Because well, no, hit save voltages after you leave because like honestly, you just want to test it out. To see if it works. Alright. And then after that. You also could do a test. Um, if I try to remember. Where the heck the test is. Uh, the TS bench. So basically the TS bench. Will tell you. How much. It will be running at. A temperature and everything. So let's run one real quick. They're really short. Basically right now I'm running at 70. 76. Legit, I didn't even see that past 76. And I don't know if higher the score is or lower the score is. I really don't know as much. But, yeah, seems pretty fine. I was more worried about the temp, and that's what I'm thinking about. But, yeah, it's still sticking, it's sticking at 46. All right. Now, one last thing before this video ends is that we want to do one more thing. Now, this thing is kind of interesting. I didn't even know this really existed. There's a thing called Task Scheduler. Which I didn't even know was a real thing, and it is. But basically, this is what this is for. Basically, you want your computer to run something at, like, launch. So that basically you don't have to open up manually, and it's always there running in the background when your computer turns on. It's like a, like an immediate startup. I don't know if you can do it in Task Manager, but if you can, I think they might be the same thing. But just to make sure, just do this real quick. It, it has helped my computer out a lot since instead of going into... Uh, Find the thermal uh, throttle stuff since it has to be in this folder. Or, no, I don't. My bad. Alright, so anyway, so we want to hit create basic task. Alright, so basically, when we want to name it throttle stop, I'm going to name it throttle stop too since I already have one named throttle stop. Alright, then we want to go when I log in. So basically, when you log into your user of your computer, we want to hit start a program, hit browse. Throttle stop should be the first choice, and it should say this for you. All right, then we hit next, and then hit open the property dialog when I'm finished. Yada yada this, and basically if I hit this, there you go. It will then show you all this, and it will tell you, and run at the highest privileges, and config for Windows 10. That would be for me. All right, and hit OK, and there we go. It's all set up, and everything should work now for me. All right, so every single time that I turn on my computer, this should already be opened. So yeah, that is basically the video. Uh, I have nothing else really to say. Um, all I know is that I've been running this program for at least four days, and it has been working tremendously for me. If you guys run into any problems, leave them down in the comments, and I'll help you guys out as much Nyack. as I can. And yeah, I'll see you guys in the next one. See you guys later.